the new autoloader, which is still used on all T64s currently in service, as well as all variants of the T80 except the Ukrainian T84-120. T64 prototypes and the first several hundred examples produced had the same 115mm smooth bore gun as the T62, the T64 and subsequent full-scale production variants had the 125mm gun. While the T64 was the superior tank, it was more expensive and physically complex, and was produced in smaller numbers. The T-72 is mechanically simpler and easier to service in the field, and its manufacturing process is correspondingly simpler. In light of Soviet doctrine, the superior T-64S were kept ready and reserved for the most important mission, a potential outbreak of a war in Europe. In Soviet times, T-64 was mostly in service with units stationed in East Germany opposing the chieftain-equipped units of the book. No T-64S were exported. Many T-64S ended up in Russian and Ukrainian service after the breakup of the Soviet Union. Models, edit. 1 Object 430, 1957 prototype with D10T 100mm gun, 120mm armor, 4 TPD 580 HP, 427 kilowatts, engine, 36 tons. 2 Object 430U project, equipped with a 122mm gun and 160mm of armor. 3 T64 or Object 432, 1961 prototype with a D68 115mm gun, then initial production version with the same features, about 600 tanks produced. 4 T64R, Roman Tournier, rebuilt, or object 432R redesigned between 1977 and 1981 with external gear from the T64R but still with the 115mm gun. T-64 upgraded to T-64 standard. Preserving the 115mm gun is questionable. 5 T-64 or object 434 125mm gun, gill armor skirts, a modified sight, and suspension on the fourth road wheel. 6 T-6040, 1963, experimental version with a GTD 3TL 700 HP, 515 kilowatts, gas turbine. 7 Object 436 alternative version of Object 432 with a V45 engine. 3 built. 8 Object 438 and Object 439 Object 434 with V45 diesel engine. 9 T64 AK or Object 446, 1972, command version, with AR-130M radio and its 10M, 33 feet, telescoping antenna, a TNA-3 navigation system, without anti-aircraft machine gun carrying 38 rounds of main gun ammunition. 10 Object 447 prototype of the T-64B. Basically a T-64 fitted with the 9K112 Cobra system and a 1G21 gun sight. This is the T-64 displayed in the Kyiv Museum. 11. T-64B or Object 4470, 1976. Fitted with redesigned armor, one a 33 fire control system, 9K112-1 Cobra ATGM system, NATO code at 8 Songster, TPN1-49-23 sight, 2 a 46 2 gun, 2 E26M stabilizer and 6 ETs 40 loader. Later B forward slash BV models have more modern systems, one a 33 1. TPN 3-49, 2E42 and a 2A46 M1 gun. From 1985 the T-64B was fitted with stronger glasses armor, 
Older tanks were upgraded with a 16mm armor plate. Tanks, equipped with the 1000 HP 6DT engine are known as T-64BM. 12 T-64BV features Contact 1 reactive armor and Tucker 81mm smoke grenade launchers on the left of the turret. 13. T-64BM2 or Object 447M2 Contact 5 reactive armor, rubber protection skirts, 1 of 43 U fire control, 6 ETs 43 loader and able to fire the 9K119 missile. NATO code at 11 a sniper, 5 TDFM 850 HP, 625 kilowatts, engine. 14 T64U, T64B Mpulat, or Object 447M1 Ukrainian modernization, bringing the T64B to the standard of the T84. Fitted with Nij reactive armor, 9K120 reflex missile. NATO code at 11 sniper, 1 of 45 Ertish fire control, TKN-4S commander's sight, PZU-7 anti-aircraft machine gun sight, TPN-4E Buran E night vision, 6 TDF 1,000 HP, 735 kilowatts, engine. T-64U is one of two variants of the modernization program in 1990s while Bulat is the most recent modernization from 2004. 15. T-64B1 or Object 437 same as the B without the fire control system and Cobra, carrying 37 shells. 16 T-64B1 MT-64B1 equipped with the 1,000 HP 6TD engine, redesigned turret and improved armor. Modernization program from 1970s, resulted in T-64M, AKM, BM and B1M. BM is not the same as T-64BM Bulat from 2004. Never entered mass production. 17 T-64BK and T-64B1K or Object 446B command versions, with an R-130M radio and its 10M telescoping antenna. A TNA-3 navigation system and a B-1P forward slash 30 APU, without anti-aircraft machine gun, carrying 28 shells. 18 Object 476 5 prototypes with the 6 TDF engine, prototypes for TATU development. 19. Brim 64 or Object 447T armored recovery vehicle with a light 2.5 ton crane, dozer blade, tow bars, welding equipment, etc. Only a small number were built. 20T55-64 heavily upgraded T55 with the complete hull and chassis of the T64, fitted with contact one era. Prototype. 21 T-Rex Ukrainian T-64 concept with unmanned turret. 22 T-64 with T-72 a turret, an Uzbekistani T-64 that had the T-72 a turret installed. Modernizations, edit. T-64. 1977-1981 brought to the T-64R standard, reorganization of external equipment as on the T-64A. T-64A, T-64AK. 1972 redesign, fire control improvement, TPD-2-49 and TPN-1-49-23, inclusion of the NSVT machine gun on an electrical turret. R-123M radio. 1973 redesigned turret with improved armor protection. 1975 redesign, new 2E28M stabilizer, 6 ETs 10M loader, multi-fuel engine, 2 of 46 one gun and TNPA-65 night vision. 1979 introduced smoke grenade launchers Tucker. 1980 rubber skirts on the suspension instead of the gill protection. 1981 redesign, 
two sets of 6902 as smoked grenade launchers. 1983 T-64 and T-64 AKM, some tanks were equipped with the 6 TDF engine during maintenance. 1985 installation of era contact 1 during overhaul. Upgraded tanks designated T-64 AV. Due to era installation, Tucker was repositioned from the front of the turret to the left side. T-64B, T-64B1, T-64BK, T-64B1K. 1979 introduced smoke grenade launchers Tucker. 1980 rubber skirts on the suspension instead of the gill protection. 1981 redesign, two sets of 4902B2 smoke grenade launchers. In fact this is related to the era installation since 1985, to a 26M1 gun. 1983 T64BM, T64B1M, T64BMK and T64B1MK. Some tanks were equipped with the 6 TDF engine during maintenance. 1985 T-64 BV, T-64 BV-1, T-64 BVK and T-64 BV-1K, with contact 1 reactive armor, smoke grenade launchers on the left of the turret. BM Bulat T-64 modernization by the Milishev factory in Ukraine, see above. 2011 T-64E. 2017 T-64 BV Type 2017, Night Sight TPN 1-49-23 replaced with TPN 1 TPV from Trumen, Ukraine, added 4215 Satellite Navigation System from Horizon Navihatsia, new Libet K2RB Digital Radio, Lunar Infrared Searchlight removed, and improved reactive armor units. This upgrade for T-64 BV tanks was received by the 14th Mechanized Brigade, participated in Strong Europe Tank Challenge 2017, and over 200 of these were in service by 2020. 2020 T-64 MV T-64 modernization for the armed forces of the Republic of Uzbekistan, consists of an installation of a more modern engine, era, slat armor and a digital radio system. Variants, edit. 1 BMPV-64 heavy infantry fighting vehicle, based on the chassis of the T-64 but with a completely redesigned hull with a single entry hatch in the rear. Armament consists of a remote-controlled 30mm autocannon and 7.62mm machine gun. Combat weight is 34.5 tons. The first prototype was ready in 2005. 2 BTRV-64 similar APC version. 3 UMBP-64 modified version that will serve as the basis for several planned specialized vehicles, including a fire support vehicle, an ambulance and an air defense vehicle. 4 BMPTK-64 This variant is not tracked but has a new suspension with four axles, similar to the Soviet BTR series. The vehicle is powered by a 5 TDF a forward slash 700 engine and has a combat weight of 17.7 tons. It is fitted with ARCWS and can transport 3 plus 8 men. Prototype only. 5 BMPT-64 Strauss, Cyrillic, translates to Guardian, fire support vehicle armed with two 30mm autocannons, two park machine guns, four ATGM launchers and one AG-17 grenade launcher, developed by Jitama Armored Plant. One BAT-2 fast combat engineering vehicle with the engine, lower hull and small road wheels suspension of the T-64. The 40-ton tractor sports a very large, all-axis adjustable V-shaped hydraulic dozer blade at the front, a single soil ripper spike at the rear and a 2-ton crane on the top. The crew compartment holds 8 persons, driver, commander, radio operators plus a 5-man sapper squad for dismounted tasks. 
the highly capable BAT-2 was designed to replace the old T-54 forward slash at T-based bat -M. But Warsaw Pact allies received only small numbers due to its high price and the old and new vehicles served alongside during the late Cold War. Two UMR-64 Ukrainian development using surplus T-64S to create a heavy APC forward slash IFV design which in turn is intended as the basis of a new family of combat and support vehicles. The basic conversion includes moving the engine compartment forward, and at the same time removing the turret and normal crew compartment. This allows the installation of any one of 15 different functional modules, weighing up to 22 tons. One resulting option is the heavy IFV, designated BMP-64E which combines accommodation for up to 10 troops, not including the driver, with a remote weapons system. The heavy APC version is designated the BTR-64E, and can not only carry more troops, at the cost of the RWS, but comes with large armored double hatches at the rear for rapid loading and disembarkation. Other options include a universal supplies carrier, UMBP-64, a highly secure command and staff car with a weight up to 41 tons, and a 120 mm mortar carrier. The Kharkiv Armor Repair Plant, Zavod 311, is behind the project. Current status of the program is unclear as of early 2014. Service History, Edit. Soviet Union, Edit. The T-64 entered service in 1967 with the 41st Guards Tank Division in the Kiev Military District, the suggestion being that this was prudent due to the proximity of the division to the factory, and significant teething problems during induction into service that required constant presence of factory support personnel with the division during acceptance and initial crew and service personnel training on the new type. It appears that the tank remained secret to the West for some years between its entry into production in the first half of 1960s and the official acceptance in the Soviet Army in 1967. The T-64 began deployment to the Soviet Union's Western military districts during the 1970s and was gradually deployed to first-line units in the group of Soviet forces in Germany in East Germany and Soviet troops in neighboring Warsaw Pact states. The first GSFG unit to receive the T-64 was the 14th Guards Motor Rifle Division at Jeterbog, which became the 32nd Guards Tank Division in 1982. When NATO detected the new tank after it was first deployed to East Germany, it was initially misidentified as the T-72. The T-64 mainly served with Soviet tank units in northern East Germany that were part of the 2nd Guards Tank Army, the 3rd Army, and the 20th Guards Army, although it began to be phased out and replaced by the newer T-80BV forward slash T-80U before Soviet troops were withdrawn from Germany in the late 1980s and early 1990s. However, when the Soviet troops withdrew from Germany, two divisions and the 6th Separate Guards Motor Rifle Brigade still operated the T-64. In September 1990, the Soviet Union had 3,982 T-64S in service west of the Urals, with 2,091 of these in Ukraine. 1,386 of these were T-64As. 220 T-64 AKs, 1,192 T-64 BS, 159 T-64 BVs, 420 T-64 B1S, 27 T-64 B1K forward slash BV1K, and 578 T-64 RS. During the Soviet period, the T-64 was never exported. It is normally reported that the T-64 was not used in the Soviet-Afghan war since the 40th Soviet Army that was deployed there used T-54 forward-55 and T-62 tanks, 
possibly due to the limited usefulness of tanks in mountain warfare. A small number of T-64 tanks were tested in Afghanistan during January 1980, but were quickly withdrawn without seeing combat because their engines did not perform well in the high altitude necessary for Afghan operations. Post-Soviet period, edit. After the dissolution of the Soviet Union in 1991, the new Russian ground forces decided to standardize the tank fleet with the T-72 and the T-80, and the T-64s were gradually put in reserve storage or scrapped. In June 1992, 18 former Soviet T-64 BV tanks from the Odessa Military District's 59th Guards Motor Rifle Division were taken over by the Transnistrian Army, fighting in the Transnistria War. Two T-64s were disabled by Moldovan ground forces troops near Benda during Transnistrian counterattacks one of which was knocked out by a Mount 12 100mm anti-tank gun. These actions were the first combat use of the tank. Ukraine, edit. Ukraine deployed its T-64S during the initial outbreak of the war in Donbas. About 300 Ukrainian T-64S were reported lost to enemy action in 2014. At least 20 were abandoned during disorderly withdrawals and subsequently captured by pro-Russian separatists of the Donetsk People's Republic and the Luhansk People's Republic. In June 2014, Russia began reactivating T-64S from its reserve stocks and donating them to the separatists as well. Donating surplus T-64S to the separatists was seen as cost-effective and deniable because the Russian military no longer had any use for the tanks and they could be passed off as individual examples captured from the Ukrainian army. U.S. intelligence officials noted that Russia will claim these tanks were taken from Ukrainian forces, but we are confident that these tanks came from Russia. Separatist T-64S donated by Russia could be distinguished by their lack of Ukrainian markings and upgrades. By early 2022, the separatist armies collectively operated a little over 100 T-64S of various marks and configurations. There were around 40 T-64 BVs stationed in Crimea in February 2014. Russia initially seized these tanks following its annexation of the peninsula, although they were returned to the Ukrainian government in June. T-64S are used by both Ukraine and the pro-Russian separatists during the 2022 Russian invasion of Ukraine. Amidst the early phases of the invasion, Russian forces captured a number of Ukrainian T-64S, which they passed on to the separatists. By the end of 2022, the Ukrainian army had lost 276 T-64S either captured or destroyed. Pro-Russian forces had also lost 50 T-64S in 2022. The crews of T-64S have been called upon to act as artillery leading to shortages in 125mm ammunition. Crews of the T-64 tanks rely on attack helicopters and drones. After firing at a target they move positions and fire again. If the Russian forces send infantry directly onto the battlefield then the T-64 crews are required to directly support the infantry. On the 21st of December 2022 the Biden administration announced an aid package with an extra 100,000 rounds of 125mm tank ammunition for the first time. Other Foreign Service, edit. Five T-64S were delivered to UNITAR forces at some point during the Angolan Civil War. The origin of these tanks is not clear but some number of them were also captured by MPLA forces. According to video evidence, at least one was destroyed in combat. The armed forces of the Democratic Republic of the Congo received 25 T-64 B1M from late 2016. 
They were seen in mid-2017 patrolling in Kasai during the Kamwin and Sapu rebellion. Capabilities and limitations, edit. A rather unconventional design, the T-64 had several features which set it apart not only from previous tanks, but from the visually similar T-72, many related to its higher mechanical complexity. Firepower, edit. 1. The T-64's hydraulic basket autoloader places the projectiles horizontally at the bottom of the turret facing towards the center, and the propellant charges vertically along the outer rim of the turret race, front down. By contrast, the T-72's cassette mechanism places the propellant charge on top of the corresponding projectile, also horizontally. 1. Being hydraulic. The basket type created a risk of hydraulic fluid fire if damaged in combat. The cassette, by contrast, is electric. Two basket type folds the projectile cradle upwards off the floor and vertically against the projectile cradle to which it is hinged, moving both pieces into the upper turret. Approaching the gun, the projectile cradle is moved forwards unfolding both cradles and ammunition pieces to a straight line, ready for insertion. The cassette's cradles are fixed, stacked propellant on top of projectile, and the two cradle assembly must raise the propellant part above the gun to load the projectile first, then drawing back the mechanical pusher, lowering the propellant part, and inserting it with a second use of the pusher. This increases the time of loading of the T-72 by approximately one second. Total loading time is thus tilde 6-13 S4 T-64 forward slash 80 against tilde 715 of T-72. 3. Because of greater diameter, basket type holds projectile and propellant parts for 6 additional shots over the cassette of T-72, 28 VS-22. 4. Because of greater diameter of projectile cradle ring of the basket type, T-64 and later T-80 have a higher limit to the maximum length of armor-piercing finstabilis discarding sabot, apfs, projectiles, providing superior anti-armor performance relative to shorter projectiles used by T-72. 5. The automatic loader of T-64 is more reliable and less sensitive to jolting when running off-road. It also has a sequence fire mode that feeds the gun with shells of the same type in less than 5 seconds. In the modern versions it is also able to turn backwards to keep a good speed at the end of the loading sequence. Six early versions of the basket autoloader lacked safety features and were dangerous to the tank crews, especially the gunner, who sits nearby limbs could be easily caught in the machinery rotating around the crew, leading to injuries and deaths. A sleeve unknowingly snagged on one of the autoloader's moving parts could also drag a crewman into the apparatus upon firing. Two, the tank commander's cupola provides good vision. The anti-aircraft machine gun can be operated from inside the turret. The commander can also control the main gun sight if necessary. 3. The turret was poorly configured to allow the crew to manually load the gun should the autoloader break. In such situations, rate of fire usually slowed to an abysmal one round per minute as the gunner fumbles with the awkward task of working around the broken machine to load the gun. Or although two-piece ammunition allows for fast reloading of the gun in combat, replenishing the autoloader is quite slow. Movement, edit. 1. Because of a lower weight than T-72, by tilde 3 tons, T-64 has slightly superior strategic and operational mobility, less wear and tear on tank transportation equipment, and lower fuel consumption per distance traveled. Two driving seems much less exhausting for the crew, thanks to assisted controls and a more flexible suspension. Three, the suspension system featured an entirely new and advanced design, and suffered various failures of unusually high frequency. Due to these problems, 
teams of civilian mechanics from the T-64 factories were semi-permanent residents of Soviet tank units early in the T-64's initial adoption phase. For the 5TDF opposed piston engine, while powerful and compact, was very finicky and prone to malfunctions and fires. Russian expert Viktor Murikhovsky, then a battalion commander in group of Soviet forces in Germany reflected that in his unit the rate of the engines requiring a major overhaul was close to one per tank in a year. He also noted the difficulty of starting this engine, especially in the damp German winters, and that starting aids used by soldiers, like the high-pressure air and forward-slash-oil injection, often cause.